Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, happy Saturday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. If you are a brand new, first time joining us, thank you very much. Spending a couple moments with you. Uh, only thing I ask, if you could be so kind, take a moment and uh, click the like button, share, subscribe, all that cool social media stuff I was told to say. I'm 15, not 15. Uh, and hopefully, again, I can continue to help you guys on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis uh, with unbiased uh, thoughts of only what happens the next day. Again, I don't know what's going to happen the following week, two weeks, three months out. Uh, we are only getting prepared for the next day. So, big story, obviously, uh, continues to play out. And again, for all you guys who are brand new uh, to the channel or brand new to me, um, I focus on the NASDAQ 100. Uh, as cool as the Dow is, going up 600 points here, 500 points there, has nothing to do with me. Uh, S&P 500, yeah, I will look at some names because they cross-reference uh, with the Q, you know, QQQs, but again, not really my thing. Banks, utilities, uh, retail, eh, not for me, right? To, to each his own. Uh, IWM, not a really big focus of me, although I do uh, recognize where it is. We'll get to that in a second. But the most important part is I track the NASDAQ 100. I believe that every trader eventually, and I'm doing this uh, for a quarter of a century, uh, every trader eventually finds their niche, right? Finds their lane, finds their zone, their sweet spot, their moment of comfort, and they stick with it no matter what happens on the outside world. The grass is always greener on the other side, but if you have a beautiful green lawn, who cares about the other side? And that's exactly uh, where our focus and the most important part has been the continuous story of technical damage in the NASDAQ 100. And you can see here, it didn't start uh, this week. It started when we engulfed uh, this big channel here on July the 11th, and we started proceeding lower and lower and lower. And the key uh, metric this week uh, was the breakdown of the 50-day moving average on Wednesday, I believe, right? And what followed uh, in the next several days was very severe uh, selling. You have three consecutive days of lower highs coming in on the NASDAQ 100. And the longer we continue to build below uh, the 50-day moving average, the higher probability there will get uh, lower prices. We'll get to what happens if uh, in a second. Uh, if you look at all the other benchmarks, uh, a little bit different, right? You got the Dow, uh, the Dow doing completely different uh, than the NASDAQ 100. Again, remember, the Dow is 30 stocks, guys. It's not that hard to get 30 stocks to being up. If every Dow stock is up like a dollar, dollar and change, there it is. There's your 650-point rally. So it's not a really great barometer. Uh, if you look at the IWM, this is super bullish. The IWM has uh, over, over-delivered, incredibly over-delivered, uh, and it's been, it, it, it's so funny because it's been a redheaded stepchild it, you know, since, you know, for a longer than you could possibly imagine. And if you look at the IWM and through its history, it's always a trailer behind the bench or major benchmarks. But the last two weeks has been absolutely on fire. And if you look at it, this is a massive, massive bull market compared to what we're seeing right now in the NASDAQ 100. Now, again, you can have a whole conversation with somebody. Well, what does this mean, right? If people are still uh, buying stocks on the IWM, the Russell, uh, that does represent speculation money. Eventually, the NASDAQ 100 has to get pulled up. And the counter argument is, well, there's no bigger, right? There's absolutely no bigger uh, entity or ETF or uh, figurehead is for speculation money as the growth NASDAQ technology names, right? Uh, so again, it's a very, very dicey little situation. This is where when we talk about the market, you have to be very, very specific because the market can mean completely something different for different people. So for example, the Dow this week was up eight tenths of a percent, right? People call that the market. Uh, the NASDAQ, which is my sweet spot, the NASDAQ 100, was down over 2% this week. And this is despite really having an aggressive rally on Friday, and if you look at the two-week 
uh, two-week deficiency of the NASDAQ 100, the QQQs. Last week, we were down 3.6 or 3.7%, and now this week, we're down another 2%. So you're talking about nearly 6% move uh, in two weeks of the NASDAQ 100. That's a big deal. And if you look at uh, and if you look at the players, right, look at the moves here. You have Google uh, reported that what looked like decent earnings, they sold it off. Again, that's a big, big sign. AMD cannot get out of its own way, right? Amazon cannot get out of its own way. Um, you have names, for example, like, uh, da, 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 you know, like uh, Avago, right? Avago split. Nobody cares. They sold it right off. So the semiconductors are getting hit very, very aggressively. Tesla came out with earnings. They didn't like the earnings, right? Uh, now Tesla is just consolidating. You know, I see a lot of people turn around and go, well, now that the news is out, it's just resting to go higher. Guys, when a stock blows up on earnings, and again, I don't even want to use that word. Let's not use the word blow up, and especially Tesla. I don't want to have a bunch of 12-year-olds yelling at me. But when you have a stock that's underperforming, right? Underperforming its earnings. And what happens is when the stock goes down and goes sideways, it's not generally rule of thumb. Again, anything is, is obviously uh, available, but the general rule of thumb is, and you can look at any stock that blew up on earnings, the general rule of thumb is when a stock is resting, it's not resting to go higher, it's resting to go lower. Uh, and you could see it by this week. Again, you could see it by this week. Um, Friday, it held its earnings lows until it gets back above 226. Did you guys see this? The top of the two channels here for the previous two days for Wednesday and Thursday, the high here was 226. Until Tesla closes above 226, there's no possible way it can go high. It's it's impossible, right? It's gotten rejected back to back days, uh, back to back days at 226. So if you like the stock, right? And I love Tesla, uh, whether it's long, short, and different. If you like the stock, I don't care what you think is gonna happen nine years from now. Doesn't it need to get and reclaim back 226 first, right? So before you start talking about, well, it's a five-year play, I don't care it's a 15-minute play. It still needs to get back above 226 to reclaim back, right? To reclaim back this gap and start filling it in. So longer-term players, again, they find every excuse to why they want to be long in stock. But the point is, if it can't get back above 226, there's no possible way it can go higher because that is the high from the last two days, and that's the highs that it got blown up on earnings. On the flip side of it is kind of what I'm looking for, right? Obviously, it gets back above 226. I'm a buyer because I do believe uh, the stock can start filling in this gap. But if it starts losing its earnings lows, guys, and that's the key, right? You have to kind of go with market sentiment, kind of go with what the market is telling you. If it loses the earnings low, especially on the close, then you got a lot of room here. You got room all the way back down uh, to the 50-day moving average, all the way down to that 200 level. So it's going to be very, very important uh, that Tesla gets back above that 226 level because if it doesn't, it starts building a home and, it, and sellers and buyers are comfortable below that 226 level. There is a high probability eventually will test uh, its earnings lows and the stock uh, will start its next leg up. Now, what is going to change the, the market sentiment for the bulls or at least for the bulls in the NASDAQ 100? We are, um, we are on deck for massive, massive earnings this week, right? Uh, you had Google and Netflix and IBM, well, okay, IBM uh, and Tesla last week, right? This week is a big week. Uh, you got Tuesday, you got Microsoft, you got AMD, you got Starbucks. Wednesday, you have Meta, Qualcomm, and Boeing, and Super Thursday, right? Super Thursday, you got Amazon, uh, Apple, and Intel. Yes, Intel still... Uh, kind of an important deal. So everything we're talking about here, and again, we're you know, you know, we're ten dollars away from the fifty-day moving average on the Qs, but that could easily change. So this is kind of the week that the bulls got to either step up, or it's going to be a very, very, you know, it's going to be a very ugly, in my opinion, right? Because if you could, the longer you stay below the fifty-day, we saw what happened that in two thousand twenty-two. So the bulls have a chance to redeem themselves if Microsoft and AMD and Meta. And Amazon and Apple could come out with great quarters, okay? And we reclaim back the 50-day moving average, we're back to the upside, right? Risk is on, we're back to the upside, everything's good. So it is a very important week, guys. It really is. It really is an important week. Um, you know, if, if these six, seven, eight companies cannot provide the sentiment change or the sentiment shift, then we're gonna have a very, very big problem, especially if you are a long bias trader 
heading into the fall, heading into the fourth quarter. Obviously, NVIDIA is going to be like the last line of defense in a couple of weeks. Uh, but more important is what happens this week and Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is going to provide a lot of clarity. Uh, the big number, obviously, this week, bulls need to get the get back above the 50-day moving average, roughly around the 473 level. And the bears, they need to close below 55. If they could close below 55, you can see how much room uh, you have. And that's the whole point of the PS60 theory. Stocks trade from supply to supply, and then they trade from demand to demand. So 73 to the upside close, 55 to the downside close, and 55 uh, has room all the way back to 444. And it does correlate kind of how ugly the majority uh, of these names are. Other asset classes are doing well. You got Bitcoin uh, surging about, what, 5% this week. I think Trump was at a, a crypto conference, which is pretty cool. I think the guy walked out to 50 cent many men. Incredible, but true. Uh, very fitting. Very, very fitting. Right now, it's like Superman. So, uh, you know, look, we, we have, if you're a bull, you have a lot of work to do. Okay. If you're a bear, you need to really uh, get your teeth into no pun intended, and start reclaiming back the ceiling or the floor uh, of last week's lows. Uh, other than that, you know, again, just trade what's in front of you guys. You know, too many traders because of the social media generation, you know, they're sitting there and they're trying to act smart. Nobody's smart in this business, guys. This is not a guessing game. Okay. I don't pretend to be smart. I'm the king of the idiots. I don't know where the stock is going to be tomorrow, the next day, the, the day after. What I do know is the data that is presented, right? So for example, NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA comes out with earnings in a couple of weeks. NVIDIA now has been day three below the 50-day moving average. I know what happens if it starts lo losing this linear regression line. Now again, it's not a testament of what happens on earnings. You know, I, I do believe NVIDIA has is going to be a bombshell earnings. They always do because of all this AI and this, that, and the third. Uh, again, the counter argument is, well, look how much the insiders are dumping stock. But guys, if your stock is up 400x in the last four years, wouldn't you sell stock too? Doesn't make That argument doesn't make any sense. So what, insiders are never allowed to sell stock? Yeah, you probably want to make some sales if your stock is up 400x in the last several years. But my point is, you know, looking at NVIDIA going to this week and understanding the importance of what happens if it loses its linear regression line, right? It's not a testament of what I think is going to happen when the company comes out with earnings. I do believe NVIDIA probably does have good earnings, but we're playing, you know, we're playing the range. I don't play the stock. I play the range. If the range is telling me there's upside bias, I, there's nothing hits better than a great bull market. But on the flip side, if stocks are telling me they're not going up on good news, they're not going up on upgrades, they're not going up on reiteration, they're not going up on good PRs, and they start selling them, they start making lower lows and lower highs, then yes, we will go back to the downside. This week was really good, really, really good. Friday was a complete non-event. Uh, the NASDAQ, you know, majority names uh, from, from me didn't do anything. I traded like Tesla like four times. I literally got a cup of coffee out of it. Just it wasn't enough meat on the bowl, but that's okay. The, the rest of the week was great. If you've been watching the video, pretty much downside levels on everything, NVIDIA, this, that, and the third. So uh, really, really solid week. Again, big week for bulls, big week for bears. Let's see if um, Microsoft, AMD, Meta, Qualcomm, Amazon, and Apple can save the day, right? Save the day and reclaim back the 50-day moving average. Guys, God bless everybody. Have an amazing, amazing rest of your weekend. When God's up, I will see you on the field on Monday. Take care.